Hey what's up folks this is GK and in this video I'm going to go over GitHub Actions. So the agenda for this video is to give you the background of the current high level CI CD with Jenkins and how GitHub CI CD is going to replace the current way of doing things with Jenkins and the components of GitHub Actions and finally you're going to see a demo with the Spring Java application, Spring Boot Hello World, it's a sample application uh, but you can also replace that with any other application of your choice. So as you all know and I have discussed this in my previous DevOps videos, at a very high level in your CI CD flow, you have a developer who is going to commit the code. And then once the code is committed, it goes to the GitHub, obviously GitHub or GitLab or any Git repository. From there, it will trigger a Jenkins job. And in Jenkins, you have the bunch of builds or bunch of jobs that would perform certain actions like, for example, to test the code or to do some integration tests. So once everything is done, you will finally deploy the code uh, to your staging or whatever environment that is out there. So this is at a very high level how the Jenkins CI/CD works. So here the main role of Jenkins is to orchestrate the whole workflow end to end right from getting the code from Git and then deploying the code to a server using some tool like Ansible or some other tools. But basically Jenkins does that in a runner or in a node, which you used to call previously a slave, but the better term is to call it as a node or a runner. And it's important to remember about this runner concept because we're gonna discuss that in the demo as well. So now, as we have seen the previous CICD, if you look at this CICD, so the way the industry is moving is, everything is done within this Git environment itself. Like for example, the developer commits the code obviously to Git, right? Uh, it could be a GitHub or GitLab. You can replace this with any Git platform but the most important and most commonly used in the industry are GitLab and GitHub. GitHub being acquired by Microsoft, you also see that uh, this is used in Azure DevOps. So once the developer commits to the Git, to the repository, now the build will also happen within the Git environment itself through GitHub Actions. So GitHub Actions will have the sequence of workflows or jobs that you have seen in Jenkins. You're gonna pretty much have the same stuff in the GitHub Actions and then it'll take care of orchestrating all that stuff and then finally deploying the code to an environment. So before I go into the demo of GitHub Actions, I'm going to go over at a very high level the workflow components or the GitHub Action components. By the way, this is very well documented and I'm going to share the link in the description. You can follow the tutorial and they also have how to deploy Docker in the GitHub Actions. It is similar to the Jenkins CI as well. Uh, basically, the whole workflow, it starts with the name of the workflow and here you can define whether this workflow has to be triggered whenever somebody is pushing something to the repository or if you want to build the workflow without any trigger, you can do that as well, which we can discuss in the upcoming videos. But in this video, I'm going to focus on what happens exactly when you commit something to a Git repository. And then the jobs, you can relate this to a Jenkins job. So each job obviously will have the build and then you can put any name here. And the runs on is like in your Jenkins, you have a node here also. This is called as a runner. So all these steps that we're gonna discuss here or everything that's going to happen in that job are going to happen in that runner, which is Ubuntu latest. And the beauty of this is that, you know, you're going to get this runner for free if you are using a public repository. This used to be the pain point with Jenkins because the maintenance of those runners uh, used to take a lot of toil on the system admins. So in the steps, you see these uses and actions. So these are the actions that we're gonna perform. Let's say, you know, I have to check out the repository. So the action here is action slash checkout. V2 is the version of that checkout plugin. So again, you can relate this to a Jenkins plugin of Git. You have a Jenkins plugin that you install in the, in the Jenkins server, and then you use that plugin as part of your Jenkins job or Jenkins workflow. So similarly here, checkout version two is the version that we're going to use as part of these steps. So I'm going to go over this whole thing in a demo that way you'll understand how to exactly perform this in live. So before I go into the demo, I want to take a few seconds to thank my sponsor for this video because without them, it's not possible to create content like this. So a huge shout out to Cloudways for sponsoring this video. Whenever you host your application in any hosting service provider, you would ideally have to choose a cloud service provider because that gives you a peace of mind, flexibility of scaling in, scaling out, as we all know. So the platform comes with the PHP based pre-baked in applications where you can choose uh, WordPress or WooCommerce. WordPress is the most common blogging website and then select your app and select either of these cloud service providers. 
the best part is you can see the pricing it's pay as you go model and you'll get 24 by 7 support so if you have any plans of hosting your website a php based website in a cloud service provider then i highly recommend using cloudways you're going to get a 15 dollar free hosting credit using my coupon i'm going to give you that in the description and you're also going to get a one month completely free hosting using my code word code gk thank you to the cloudways for sponsoring this video with that let's go into the demo all right so go to your github repository if you have existing repo you can also create actions in that but i have created a spring hello repository as you can see there is nothing in here so now what i'm going to do is i have a sample hello world code here you can also get this from any github repository so i'm gonna commit my first code to this new repository commit minus m first commit push origin master so by the way i have added my ssh key to the repository that's why you don't see me entering any username or password here okay so if i refresh this screen you should see the code here and like i've said i got this code from uh, the github repository in public please feel free to use the same if you want to use it as a demo all right so now we have the java hello world application here spring application the reason why i have chosen spring is because that's the most commonly used technology for your microservices all right so now the commit is done we have we have pushed the code to my sample spring hello repository and now what you see here on the right side is very important you see that it identified that the code here is java so it says 100 percent java so there is no other languages as part of this repo so the reason why this is important is once you go to the action so click on actions on top section here and this is where we're going to create our first workflow so here it will automatically suggest what is the workflow that you might want to use with the code that you have in the repo because our code is java it says you can use this uh, workflow to build with maven or if you have gradle you can use gradle but based on our code we're gonna go with maven but you can see that the best thing is you get all the suggestions based on the language that is there in the repository if i scroll down you can also see the other things here because as part of your cicd one is building the code which, which we're going to do here with maven but also uh, running few test cases or uh, saving the artifact in an artifactory and also deploying that uh, to your environment and that's where they have workflows to deploy the code into azure web app or you know amazon ecs they have a workflow to to deploy to gke as well and then you can set up the terraform and they have a huge marketplace of integrations that you can follow uh, which makes this which makes this which uh, which makes which makes this even more awesome because you know you don't have to worry about like if there are some actions that are missing uh, do we have to write custom actions because there's a huge marketplace for this so i'm going to click on set up this workflow so i'm going to replace this workflow with whatever i have tested previously pretty much everything is going to be same so i'm going to replace my workflow and then we can discuss more so here i'm calling it as java ci with maven and on push branches master so if there is a commit that happens to the master branch this workflow will be triggered and then it runs on ubuntu latest which is our runner and then the ubuntu latest will have the java jdk 11 and it's going to use action checkout v2 which is the version 2 and then it is also going to use the action which is set up java because ultimately to build this code inside the runner you have to set up java and we don't have we don't have to manually do that because there is already a, an action that is associated with setting up java and we're going to use the version 2 and then we're going to use another step which is build with maven this is where you're going to build so what i'm doing additionally is once the build is completed obviously you will have a jar file out of this so i am copying that jar file to an artifacts directory so here i'm creating a artifact directory and copying this target to the artifacts directory and then i'm just verifying this if the artifact is present this was part of a part of my debugging step because once it failed before so i wasn't sure like if the jar file is actually copied into this artifacts as part of the next step i'm saving that artifact i'm persisting that artifact so inside this build so that i can download that artifact into my computer or you can use that artifact if you want to deploy but the best way is to you know save the artifact in an artifactory or in in a in a repository that you can automatically trigger to deploy that but for now for this demo i'm just persisting this artifact 
to download it to my desktop. So by the way, you have very good documentation here, what to follow and what to write here. And they also have a very good editor here. Whenever you make some changes to the spaces or anything, it, it will be shown automatically if there is any issue here. So you don't have to worry about the YAML issues that you usually face in the terms of indentation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger this workflow by committing something to my master branch. For that, I have to click on start commit, sample commit to workflow, commit new file. All right, so now it has committed the workflow into my repository. So if I go back to the actual repo, you see it is a dot github which is a hidden file and inside the workflows you see maven publish dot yaml is a new workflow that was created now if i go back to the actions now right now the workflow is running and so you can see the build is running here the status is in progress i'm going to pause the video all right so it took 31 seconds to complete this and can refresh this one to show you the total duration it took is 42 seconds and then there is one artifact. In fact, as part of this job, the artifact is here, which we have persisted. Now I can download this artifact to my computer. And then once I extract this artifact, you will see the jar file as part of the artifact. As you can see here, the hello world artifact is here. Now you can deploy this jar file and then get a hello world spring application. And here, if I go back to the actions, you can see the summary of the executions that have happened here. There was one run, you know, and it shows the commit ID and who committed and what was the time. But that's at a very high level, how to use GitHub actions. I hope you got something out of this video and it, it's very easy actually to use GitHub actions. If you want to take an assignment, my suggestion would be to create a workflow that is going to deploy something to S3 bucket or uh, you know sync up the files after the artifact is created to an S3 bucket and then deploy that in AWS. I'm also going to create that in the next videos but if you don't want to miss that please do subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching this. Take care. Bye.